Hi, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big thank you to all my subscribers. We've now reached the milestone of 10,000 subscribers and so here's to the next 10,000. If you've only just stumbled on the channel, why not subscribe now? In this video presentation we're going to be looking at regenerative endodontics, a relatively new technique. I posted a couple of cases earlier on and we're looking today at the reviews. Ideally with this technique we're looking to recreate and regenerate the pulp after it has died and the tooth has become infected with bacteria. However, the dream of recreating a viable pulp is probably an illusion. The technique is excellent for treating such teeth with immature roots and establishing root end closure and perhaps some root growth. But you can see from these reviews, it's not always predictable. I hope you enjoy it. So the aim with regenerative endodontics is to get resolution of any pathology. Continued root development, this is wall thickness and apexification. And of course the development and regeneration of a viable pulp. Cases suitable for this technique will have a necrotic pulp with possible periapical pathology and an open apex. The treatment is carried out over two visits. The first phase is disinfection, so we're using sodium hypochlorite, calcium hydroxide or a tri-mix of antibiotics. The second phase, the dressing is removed and the root canal disinfected further and then a blood clot introduced into the root canal space in the hope that this will regenerate into viable pulp. So in diagrammatic form, we can see that the root canal is disinfected, the blood clot induced, and then sealed using a bioceramic. So in the first case, we can see an immature central incisor with an open apex and periapical abscess. We're joining the case at the second visit where the calcium hydroxide dressing is being irrigated from the root canal using sodium hypochlorite and EDTA before a blood clot is induced and sealed in place using biodentine and composite in the access cavity.
On the final radiograph, you can see the various layers. So we've got a blood clot apically, the biodentine, and then composite in the axis cavity. Looking at the preoperative and review CBCT slices, you can see that there was continued root growth in this case and resolution of the periapical abscess. The second case was one of an older patient, an 18 year old, with an acute periapical abscess around their mandibular right second premolar. The tooth had an exvagination that had been worn away, allowing ingress of bacteria into the root canal. The preoperative CBCT shows the immature root and periapical radiolucency very nicely. In the post-operative radiograph, you can see the blood clot, biodentine and composite in the access cavity. At 18 months, the periapical abscess had completely healed. There was no increase in root length or thickness of the root wall, and there was an interesting calcification in the apical third. Apically, you can see the presence of osteodentine. I've seen this occur quite frequently in teeth that have been evolved and then replanted with no further root canal treatment. In the apical third, there's a calcific bridge and above this, potential pulp tissue. Review CBCT shows the calcific bridge very nicely and complete resolution of the periapical abscess. Here you can see the axial view from the preoperative and review CBCT. It's been magnified and we're panning from coronal to apical. It shows the calcific bridge very nicely in the apical third. So in conclusion, and there are some references coming up shortly. What kind of cases are suitable for regenerative endo? They're necrotic, with an open apex, and immature root. Cases where the root wall is well formed are probably better treated using an apexification type technique. How about disinfection? Well, we need a lower concentration of sodium hypochlorite, so 1.5% is suitable. We also need 17% EDTA to try and release mediators from the dentine before inducing the blood clot. Do we use a triantibiotic or calcium hydroxide? Well, it appears that the calcium hydroxide will work as well as a triantibiotic paste and you also don't get any problems with staining. And how about the seal? Biodentine or MTA? Well, I think biodentine is probably easier to use and again, there have been recorded cases of staining when using MTA for regenerative endo.
Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.